which was born on 23rd of July uh, 2013. Um, Thea was a, a perfectly normal baby, apart from being a pain in the bum during pregnancy and uh, being the wrong way around and uh, causing mum to have to have a, uh, a C-section. Um, she was absolutely fine uh, until we discovered about five months old as she started to sit um, sort of unaided on her own. She had a, a bit of a lump or a bump protruding from her lower back uh, and we contacted uh, Dr. Sekuti at the uh, Nuffield in Leeds and he arranged to, to see us within about five days. Um, so we took there to see him and at that point he so we went off for our x-rays uh, and then he asked to see us straight away that day. By that point we'd already come home so we said we'll come back and see you tomorrow. At which point our worlds were turned upside down. Um, we obviously went into his office. Uh, there was uh, Grandma was there, my mother, uh, me, Sam and, and just Thea. Ava was at nursery. And um, he proceeded to basically explain to us that our child, our child had a, a terminal illness um, and wouldn't live beyond nine years old. Um, whatever it would have been, we would have tackled that, I'd like to think, head on. Um, I think it's every parent's worst nightmare to think that they're going to have a disabled child. You would have looked at Thea, she was just a beautiful, smiley, happy child who didn't have a care in the womb. Um, we spent two weeks in Leicester. Uh, again, at that point though, they had administered a massive dose of steroids, which, as we know now, had, had dampened down her inflammatory response within her body. So after, after two weeks, she was um, extubated in Leicester. We returned to Manchester. She returned straight to the bone marrow transplant ward and we were thinking, great, we've, we've got through the hard bit. Um, as we found out when we got back, we were told, look, if she can get through the next couple of weeks, she, she should get through this fine. Three days later, she started to deteriorate again and we ended up on the HDU unit at Manchester. And again, 24 hours, 48 hours later, she deteriorated significantly more to the point where she was brought back into ICU again. Um, you know, really struggling to, to bring their saturation levels up. Uh, and we spent two weeks in ICU. Um, after about the first week, it, it, it started to dawn on us how, how serious it, all, all this had become. Because it wasn't only the struggling to breathe, she'd also developed something called graft versus host disease. Um, when she returned to Manchester, she had it at stage one. It very quickly, within two days, developed to stage four of which we think it was in the lungs as well as her skin and her skin was it almost it, it almost looked like it was fully covered in burns and blisters and her skin was actually being treated by the specialist burns unit her eyes <coughs> she developed GVHD in her eyes as well so the specialist ophthalmolo ophthalmologist had to do her eye care every day mm. and um, yeah I think I think after about a week we, we had some very very tough decisions um, and tough conversations with the consultants and uh, it was agreed if, the, uh, if her heart was to stop, we would not resuscitate. Um, if, um, if she was to deteriorate significantly, we, we wouldn't rally, we wouldn't prolong, we wouldn't push the inevitable, we would let her go peacefully. Um, and I think after the two weeks, you know, we, we knew we were at that point again, as we were the first time she was in ICU where we'd hit a brick wall and there was nowhere to go. She was on full pressures and, and she'd suffered, you know, for, for months. <coughs> and it was time to just, we had to make a, a dignified decision for Thea. So obviously all our family and friends came along and, and all said their goodbyes. Um, and, and we sat down and we had a cuddle and we, we let Thea go to sleep. And uh, she was at peace. We set up Thea's trust originally as a, um, a, a discretionary trust. Um, and now we are a couple of days off becoming a full charity um, and as well as limited, limited company status obviously non-profit making. Um, this will open up more avenues and allows us to raise a lot more so money. So far to date I think we've raised nearly £21,000 in, in three months um, and I don't feel like I've got started yet. So. Um, so moving forward, uh, obviously, uh, we, we want this, this charity to, to, like I say, to just be Thea's legacy. Uh, you know, she will never be forgotten, um, but, but also to, to help others, you know, and, and the more awareness we can raise, the more we can help the professionals, the consultants, the GPs, as well as everyday people to understand a little bit more about MPS.